Hi guys, I'm Chris. And I'm James. And welcome to The Better Out Than In. And welcome to The Lost Episode. The Lost Episode. So Chris was doing some spring cleaning in the back of the bar the other day. Yes. And found another one of these tiny miniature uh, whiskey loot bottles. Yes. One of the ones you get spare. So you usually get, as we mentioned, three bottles in one of these, which we went through for the whiskey advent calendar. Mm -hmm. When you first sign up, you also get a additional bottle. Yes. So this is the additional bottle that we have. Yeah. The long lost bottle that we were looking for. So this one, uh, <laughs> Cotswold Single Malt. Yeah, and it's the first uh, whiskey that's ever been distilled out of the Cotswold, England. Now uh, that's uh, West Midlands, so somewhere West between Midlands. like Oxford, which is just west of London, and Wales. Yeah, so it's basically a big national park, very beautiful. Supposedly everyone loves to go there. All they like to go holidaying and stuff like that. Yeah, and they've got a slight accent. <laughs> Just a slight accent. As most people in the UK do. So we might slip in and out of accents during this episode. They might not be Cotswold based. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, but this one is taking inspiration from Brook Laddie, um, which uh, basically it employs 100% locally grown floor malted barley. Um, so That's some know, hard work. Yeah. If, if you know from previous episodes, we talked about floor malted barley, which is where they basically turn... A few monkey shoulders coming off that. <laughs> yeah. Turn the barley and uh, they do that by hand, or usually, uh, when, it, when it comes to the yeah. floor malted. Um, and in an effort to actually improve transparency, the barley variety um, and the farm it was actually grown in is listed on each of the bottles. Now, because we've got our little special bottle, we don't actually Sadly, have that. we don't have that. But I reckon that's actually really unique. Selling point and they're quite quite cool. Yeah. I know I took the the Mickey out of the organic one. Yeah. And this kind of goes that way, but like to know where your like the ingredients for your whiskey came from, to some degree, because I imagine it's not that specific depending yeah. on how they do it. Yeah, that's quite cool. They're quite interesting. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, you know limited releases, um, select batches, all that kind of stuff where they have it on the actual yeah. bottle. Yeah. All that information. So it must be just... small batch kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It adds to that, but even kind of more detail. Not only do you know what cask it was in, it's like. It also came from this dude's farm. Yeah. Just rock up to his castle and say, hey, you made this. Yeah. Or, or I'll cool. take some barley and I'll, I'll, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll go make my own. Make my own whiskey. <laughs> so it um, started in 2014 and they basically um, was made in first fuel ex bourbon casks as well as um, large 225 litre American oak red wine casks um, that have been shaved and toasted, etc. as they usually do. Yep. And interestingly enough, the whiskey consultant, Dr. Jim Swan, who's... Uh, also helped Cavalan and Amaru, both yep. of which we tried in the show, also helped them set them up and kind of get them on the right path. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really interesting that they would use this, uh, like that similar kind of, uh, let's say, unique profiles that we've tried here before. I didn't even know of the guy until we actually started doing research into this whiskey. I didn't know about it when we started doing Cavalan yep. or the Amaru. So yeah, it's quite interesting. There's a, like there was an expert in the world who was like, That'd be a cool job. I, mean, yeah, so, yeah, I exactly. really love that as a job. Yeah. All right, I'll just get it all over the world, help you guys set up whiskey distilleries and how to get a flavor profile. Yeah, that sounds... Uh, That's awesome. Tough gig. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this release has been aged for just over three years and it comes in uh, non-chill filtered uh, with uh, no uh, added coloring. <laughs> You'd hope it was a no added coloring. That's pretty pale. It's very, very Not pale. Not too pale, but It still does say pale. on this bottle that it's got no age statement, but it is uh, aged for at least three years uh, just to adhere to whiskey regulations. Um, some interesting facts about this one is it won the World Whiskey Awards in 2018 for the best English single malt. Not sure how much that actually says because well, we I haven't actually tried too many English the, single malts. There's the Pend one or is that Welsh? There's a couple uh, of English ones that I've seen out at Dan Murphy's in Australia, but you're, there are too many um, English whiskies. Yeah, and another fun fact is it scored 95 points in the Jim Murray Whiskey Bible of 2018 where he uh, described it as liquid gold. So we're looking forward to this. And once we read that, we're much more excited like, oh, than originally we were. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh. So pretty good for a, a hidden bottle oh. just hiding at the back of the bar. So yeah, looking forward to trying this one, which has got to be one of our first English whiskeys. It is our first English whiskey. I've, like I said, I've seen some, but I just... True, we've had French whiskey and it was a lot better than I assumed it would be. We had the one, Rooftop Rye, my favorite of all time now. Yep. So I've, I should really go into this with an open mind, but I just don't picture the English making whiskey, which is weird given Ireland and Scotland are right next to them. Uh, I've got to say, incredibly sweet fruit notes, very, very light. Um, peaches, plums, oh. you get all of that on you the You get nose. the fruit straight you away, don't you? get the fruit you? straight away. Um, wow. It's kind of nectary, um, like really uh, orchard sweet, fruits, it's concentrate. You said like nectarines, yep. pear, pears, peaches, apple a bit. Yeah. 
but like the nectar itself, like the syrup of the fruit, mm. like it smells really rich, really concentrated. Sweet bread or it something? It smells incredible. It smells very nice. Very, very sweet. Very sweet. Um, it's very fruit sweet. As I said it's very fructose. Yeah. Is what is how I would describe it? Yep, absolutely. Uh, incredible nose for a three year old. Absolutely incredible. Marzipan. A little, yes. Concentrated yeah. sugar. The the big like low le- like low level marzipan, not like mm-hmm. when you go and eat like fruit cake, like fruit wedding cake, which you got the no, marzipan. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I know what you're saying. No. Oh, I, I, I've got to get uh, into mm. this. Ooh, ooh, way more spice than I thought they'd be. Boom. Yep. Quite a wood. Yeah, a bit of oak. And water there. Still get, you get a, mm. as it describes it, warming spice, which you definitely notice it. You look like you're almost in tears. Oh, yeah, just a little bit held on the tongue. <laughs> um, that yeah. seems to be a common theme that's, that's been happening with a lot of the whiskies lately. <laughs> you're, you're holding it on the tongue too long. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit too long. A um, lot of spice, very, very sweet, rich fruits. Um, the spice dissipates really quickly, though. It does. And then all you're left with is a very sweet, caramelized sugar it's like you've bitten into a bit of fruit and then you've chewed and taken it away and that's kind of the without the acidity yeah like definitely basically yes. keep yeah. all the sweet notes of the fruit remove any acidity that you yeah. get from it and that's what you're left with very very nice like a like a um like a marmalade but not like um you know not like an orange marmalade or Spice in the fruit reminds me of rhubarb. I don't know why I don't say that. I'm not a big fan of rhubarb. I don't eat a lot of it. For some reason, that's the word that's stuck in my head. I, I gotta say, uh, the term liquid gold is probably very apt for this one. Like it is, it is quite, it's quite nice, quite nice. And when I smell it, I think of golden fruits. I don't think of you golden know, circle, like <laughs> Australian brand. That's Australian, Australian brand. Nature, that's what I think of. I don't think of like uh, rich, dense, dark fruits. I don't. Think no, it's it's no berries, no. No. no cherries because I want to rhyme all that kind of stuff. The dark fruits, I agree. It's it's those light orchard fruits. Yeah, it's exactly what it's like. Yeah, yeah. We said like a little bit of sweetness, like a little bit of sugar or honey or toffee, very light toffee kind of thing coming through. It. Yeah, yeah. And then yep. once you once you once you put on the flavor, it's very much a, it's not a spice bomb, but it's full of spice. Yeah, definitely. And then is. it dissipates quite quickly, and then you're left with this kind of nice mellow aftertaste in some ways. It's not too mellow, not like. Some of the other mellow stuff we've done is very plain. It's not yeah. and all like that, but it really dampens down quite quickly. It's really quite interesting that uh, we're left here with uh, this hidden gem that's just been sort of sitting there for a few months, mm. um, you know, waiting to, to be opened. And I got to say, for me, this is this is very, very, very enjoyable. Um, I would I would rate that quite highly. I enjoyed it, but I don't think I'd go back and have like follow up with multiple glasses of the same beverage. I'd want to go try something else after this one. Where well, I think this is more your flavor profile. You'd probably have a few more than I would. Yeah, yeah. I, I could definitely sip on that for uh, at least a few, uh, a few drinks without uh, becoming complacent about it. Hmm. Definite win. Well, who would have said? Oh, oh that's what we're going to do. What is it like the Hundred Year War, where it's like England and France like battled for a hundred years? We could do the. Oh well, that's the end of our Cotswold. But we could get a bottle of Cotswold. We compare it to some of the French ones we have from Amaruk, the rooftop rye. What we're doing for Bastille Day this year, another Amaruk one. Interesting. And we could do a bit of a, you know, how they like to have their competition. Yeah. Was the English and the French? Yeah. And go for that. Yeah, very right. true. Who would have thought that an English whiskey would be the one that uh, would surprise us sort of the most in recent times? <laughs> I had very low bar. <laughs> I'll be honest. Fair. I wasn't expecting much out of an English whiskey. No, no, very <laughs> But um, did surprise us. Uh, is quite, if quite you, enjoyable. If you like scotches. I would definitely suggest you will like that. Yeah, uh, about one hundred and twenty dollars a bottle here in Australia. Yep. Um, so not too unreasonable, uh, and it's probably right on the money in terms of. Uh, I would say they're around the hundred buck mark. Yeah. So that's definitely within range at ninety to one hundred and twenty. I think definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's all we have time for, guys. Thank you for staying tuned, and we'll see you next time. See you guys. See ya. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining us at the Better Out Than In. Remember, if you like this video, to like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. If you have any feedback or suggestions, leave us a comment or drop us a line. The Better Out Than In supports the responsible service and consumption of alcohol. If you or a friend would like any more information about this, please visit drinkwise.org.au or your local alcohol support organization.